Hey, good evening. Thanks so much for joining me. I'm Ellen Lewis from Crazy For You. And tonight we are gonna be talking about the Coconuts method of creating a sweater. It is one of the few top-down in the round methods I can get behind. And I thought I would share with you tonight a few of the reasons that I like it and whether or not it might be for you. So, uh, if you are listening, it's probably because you're interested in coconuts or you have worked a coconut sweater or you just want to find out more. Go ahead and tell me in the comments your thoughts. You know, have you ever worked um, any sweater designed by Julie Weisenberger or from the coconuts workshop or um, what your experience is and what your thoughts are? So I will look at that as we kind of go through. But Anyway, Julie Weisenberger is the founder of the line Coconuts, and she is certainly no stranger to the industry. Um, she, in the 1980s, she owned her own knitwear company, and then in the 90s, she was designing for um, yarn companies and others. And then in the in the early 2000s, I think it was 2007, she founded her own company, Coconuts. So I opened Crazy For You in 2004. So I was on board when she started designing. And I remember finding her designs through a small pattern distributor called Deep South Fibers. This was long before the days of Ravelry. So there were no electronic patterns available. Um, and I, I loved them. I fell in love with kind of her design aesthetic and everything. And I ordered a whole bunch of those patterns. Hi, Gwen. Thanks for joining me. So anyway, um, yeah, it was, it was really fun. And I wanted to kind of do something a little fun and share my screen and show you some of the early coconuts patterns that I knit and that Ginny knit. So um, hang on and I'll share my screen here. Hi, B. Thanks for joining us. Okay, let's see. All right. Okay, <laughs> so this was a long time ago, so be kind. <laughs> Let's see. Anne, hey, welcome. Hey, Terry. So good, good, good. Okay, so we'll, we will get there. All right, so let me show you this to start. All right, so this is one that Ginny made a long time ago. It's called Sabine, and it was designed to be knit with a, um, a very sheer fabric at a large gauge. And you can see that it's a classic top-down raglan, and it has this great drape in the front that you can see. Um, and I think Ginny actually made this and as a fundraiser for Soderly, so that was very cool. And this is another one Ginny made. It's called Nettie. I don't think I have a picture of Ginny wearing it, but again, classic top-down raglan. Um, the design aesthetic, I think, sort of started to see coconuts peeking out here, you know, um, with, the, with the interesting yarn, the wildly thick and thin, and the asymmetrical look, and the, you know, over gauge and the slightly belled sleeves. I think that's extremely coconuts. Hi, Evelyn. I'm glad you could join us too. All right, what's next? Okay, so um, this is a, a Petra. I actually did this fairly recently. Um, I didn't mean to show you that one yet. Emma is one from the book. That was the first cocoa knit sweater that I ever knit. Um, this is also from the book, Tulula. Uh, this one, this was probably the first cocoa knits I ever made it's all in one piece but you can see that it's not from the top down it was from the bottom up all in one piece um well plus the sleeves so this was very cool a little cropped um kind of a swing coat and i liked it so much that i actually made it twice <laughs> there's the other one the second one that i made i made a little longer and i think that was that was better altogether. but very cute design um this one is a million years old. This was Tessa. This was fun all in one piece. It has this great twisted uh, double knit edge. I love that. I would make that again. Um, 
This one is an early, like I said, an early coconut. It's called Nicola, and there were two versions, one with a, um, with a little uh, ribbon at the bust and one without, obviously I did the one without, but this was nice because it had a little bit of, um, a little bit of bust shaping in there, which was fun and good. This was the early Petra. Um, it's hard to believe that this is the same sweater as that. <laughs> so completely different. And this one, and Katerina. So this was back in, gosh, 19 or 2000 and nine, I think. Anyway, I have the dates on those, but I thought it was just sort of fun to see some of the early kind of Coco Knits designs and how her aesthetic has changed over the years and how it stayed the same and how the construction method that she developed has evolved. So um, in 2017, she published the book Coco Knits method. So the coconuts sweater workshop, which is, is this, and this is basically the, the Bible, the how to the handbook for the coconuts method. Um, all of the other patterns that are not in the book refer to this book. So if you're even thinking about getting into coconuts, the best thing to do is to buy that book and kind of pour over it. It's more than just a pattern book. It is full of great information about not only the method, but she has some style guidance from her years as a, you know, a knitwear, owning her own knitwear company. Um, she has great information about shapes and silhouettes and design elements that flatter different kinds of figures, you know, top heavy, bottom heavy. Um, you know, straight, straight and whatever. So I think it's, I think it's a really great book and I, I love it. So, all right. <laughs> yes, I do. B I age a lot, but that's a good thing, right? <laughs> so what else did I want to tell you? So, um, you guys know me from a long time and you know that top down in the round tends not to be my jam. There's a lot of reasons that I find that I, I don't prefer it myself. We've talked about it a lot in terms of, um, you know, seams providing structure and, and fit and everything. All that being said, the coconuts method is one that I can definitely get behind and, and have, as you can see. Um, like I said, I had made a few of those those garments early on, and then there were was like a, a flood of garments on the market. You know, everybody was doing this top down method, which which really isn't new. You know, it's been around for a long, long time. Um, but I kind of ignored the coconuts method for a while, um, and other things to do, I guess. And then Jenny May, I don't know how many of you know Jenny May, but she's absolutely lovely and she's our sock lady. So she teaches socks and she's all about kind of new and innovative ways to do things. So she was the first one in the shop to say, hey, we're not gonna do socks from the cuff down exclusively. I do them from the toe up and I wanna teach both. So yeah, and that was great. And Jenny is just so wonderful and so positive and so full of enthusiasm. And, and she's definitely a top down in the round girl. She said, hey, there's this new way of doing sweaters and it's um, cocoa knits. I know you know Julie Weisenberger's work. And um, so there's this book and I've bought it and can I show it to you? And I'm like, yeah, okay. <laughs> Cause Jenny's just so cute, of course. <laughs> You're always gonna say yes. Um, so she showed it to me and I'm, I'm thinking, okay, all right. But she, she was so about it. Um, she wanted to make the cover design, which is, you know, as you can see, this really pretty white kind of boat neck, cozy sweater. And we happen to have some white, bulky, cozy yarn in the shop. And she wanted to make it for her daughter, um, Casey. Yeah. So for Casey. So um, I gave her the yarn and she went off and she knit the sweater and she came back and she was like, I love it. I love it. And you'll love it too. And you should just really try it. And I was skeptical, of course, uh, because I'm skeptical. <laughs> but I tried on the sweater that she had knit for Casey and I really, really loved it. It didn't have those 
issues that so often plague top-down sweaters. It wasn't um, it wasn't bunchy under the arms. Um, it, it didn't have extra fabric in this area. Um, it had a set-in sleeve, which you know I'm all about the set-in sleeve. So I totally loved, I loved it. And I said, okay, I will, I will do this with you. And we will, I, I went off and I made a sweater and I, I made that one that I showed you earlier, the gray, um, the gray V-neck in the, um, I used Shibui Drift for that, which is a beautiful, luxurious Aran or heavy worsted weight yarn. And then Jenny and I proceeded to teach several classes and introduce the method and, I, I became a believer, you know, um, the doing and the seeing really won me over. So that was kind of cool. Let me look and see. Um, so you have her book, B. Anne has her book. Um, good, good. So I do a Cocoa Knits Method workshop class a couple times a year in the shop just because I think people want to learn the method, they're curious. And while the book gives you all of the information that you need, I think it's always helpful to have somebody who can demonstrate it in person or you know over Zoom like I'm gonna be doing at this class and say, okay, here's exactly how you do this. And I'm gonna show it over and over and over again. So I think that's, that's really fun. So, um, yeah, so I made the Emma and the things that stood out to me besides what I just mentioned are this concept of um, English tailoring. So what is English tailoring? You know, you, you talk about that or you hear about that a lot in conjunction with the coconuts method. And basically English tailoring is just shoving and, and I'm not talking about English tailoring in terms of menswear or men's suiting or whatever. You're definitely going to go down the wrong rabbit hole. If you look up English tailoring, you're going to get a bunch of stuff about Savile Row suits and um, Italian suits versus British suits and versus American suits. And it's okay for me because I love menswear, <laughs> but you might get a little confused. But in terms of in terms of sweaters and sweater design, it basically means shoving the, the angle of the shoulder line back. And I have a little video that I prepared and I'm going to share with you. Um, Terry, all right, yes, you took the class and did the book. Emma, um, you did the Emma, it's beautiful. Yep, oh, thank you. So Terry, um, if you don't know Terry, Terry is a beautiful knitter and she's um, blessed with an incredible physique. She has a lovely slim body and she's very busty. So we worked on the Emma to give her some short row shaping in the bust area, which is another thing that I really love about the Coco Knits is that it's very clear how to get a little extra bust shaping in there if you need that, which is always welcome. If you have a large bust, you know what that fit problem looks like. So anyway, um, I'm going to try the technology. Let me see if this, if this works. Hang on. All right. A regular pattern. All and right. A Let me set go in sleeve. Back. Hang now on. You think in okay. So Can you hear this? about a regular pattern with a set in sleeve, you know, you think in terms of this shape of garment. Okay, and this angle here is about 20 degrees. So th from here's the horizontal, and then you have this shaping, and this angle here from your geometry, ge geometry days is about 20 degrees, right? Um, and you have that on the, on the front here, and then you also have it on the back. Okay, so when you go to seam together, you have another 20 degrees here. So 20 degrees and 20 degrees together is, of course, 40 degrees. So what, with Coco Knits, what has happened is that there is no shaping here on the front side, and all of the shaping, we have a much steeper angle here at the back. Does that make sense? So we have no shaping here anymore. 
So this just becomes longer here. And then we no longer have this angle here, but a much steeper angle, which is now 40 degrees, okay? Because we are, we are decreasing or increasing or whatever every row. So I know this looks very kind of mathy, but I just wanted to show you exactly what I'm talking about in terms of why this works. So with the cocoa knits function here, you have this shape, okay? You have this tab that's straight here that fits into a very deep angle here. Does that make sense? Okay, so um, did that did everybody kind of get that? I, I don't think it's like wildly important to the making of the sweater for you to understand that, but you know, I'm all about why. And I really want you to understand that this isn't just some gimmicky thing. It's really important and it's been thought through and it really, really works. Um, and so the benefit of that is that you don't have a seam, you see this is a coconut sweater, you don't have a, a seam at the top, so you can do a very bulky sweater without having a bulky seam sit at the top of your shoulder. Not that it's a big deal, because I mean, I have plenty of bulky sweaters that are seams that I absolutely love, but that, that increase that you get along the back edge, you're increasing every row, and then rather than those tabs, rather than sewing those tabs to that angle, you're actually picking up along that steep angle and working those tabs kind of forward. Um, and it, interestingly enough, if you look at, uh, let me see if I can find it again. If you look at that Brigitte that's all laid out, I'm gonna share this again. Can you see that? Is that what you're seeing? Yeah. You can see that that deep angle right here. And then this tab at the top is what is seamed into that. Does that make sense? So this is this is the concept of the English tailoring without doing it in the opposite direction. So it's it's kind of cool because then you you are working this small sort of trapezoid place and then you are picking up along each side of that to come from here down forward over the shoulder. So um and then you're picking up for the sleeve. So it's it's definitely a lot of picking up and there's a, a lot of things to be learned that are really different, but it's no harder or more complicated than the concept of, you know, working two sides of a neckline on a bot on a bottom up sweater. You know, if you're working bottom up, you have um, neckline shaping, you have armhole shaping, you have shoulder shaping going on, and if you're just learning, that's definitely a fiddly thing to learn how to do. I mean, you guys know this, right? Um, and so working it in the opposite direction is just a little bit fiddly, but it's a great concept and it really does produce, I kind of feel like the holy grail of a top down in the round sweater with a set in sleeve that actually fits and flatters really well. Because I think a set in sleeve is just a classic, classically flattering garment. I mean, everyone can wear a sweater with a set in sleeve. Not everybody is comfortable with um, an oversized drop shoulder garment. You know, that fit is, is great for some and um, not so great for others. So for me, I like projects and designs that can be worn by women of all shapes and sizes because I think that's super important. So what else did I wanna tell you? Let's see. Um, so, in all fairness, um, Julie Weisenberger is not the only designer to sh to do the English tailoring, you know, shifting that shoulder line back a bit. But she is the first one to do it 
in this direction and to create a method where you're picking up for that rather than, um, than seeming it. So I really, it's really very, very clever what she did. It's a, a beautiful job and um, it's a very well thought out kind of pattern drafting, which I like. I really appreciate that. Um, you know, I do for, for every project that I do, and Anne knows this, Anne Sardula, I write out you know, the, um, the shaping. So sometimes you're gonna have a neckline shaping and you're gonna have armhole shaping at the same time. Those dreaded words at the same time, it's enough to you know send you screaming from and put your pattern aside, put your knitting aside, and say, okay, where's my garter stitch scarf? But the way she has has created, she Julie has created this this method. There's a wonderful worksheet that you fill out ahead of time, and everything's right there. And she walks you through how to fill out the worksheet, and it's just brilliant, and it makes the knitting so much easier. It really does. It makes it kind of, you're just following the plan that you set up for yourself and you can move forward that way. So those are some things that I like about, um, about the process. And I also love, I guess those are reasons I like the product too, but I, I love that when you are working top down, which is like I said, not typically my jam, but in this case, it gives you all of this flexibility with your, with the body of the garment, with the hem of the garment, with the cuff of the garment. And I want to show you uh, three, the three cocoa knits, Emma's, three different sweaters from the same pattern that I've made and how very, very different they each are. So hang on. Okay. So... This one you saw on the picture, this is the first Emma. I did the V-neck and you can see it has this very pretty set in sleeve that fits really, really nicely and a V-neck. And with a sleeve, um, the pattern calls for a tapered sleeve where you decrease a couple times as you're going down. I ended up not decreasing at all. It doesn't give you a bell sleeve per se. It gives you a straight sleeve, which has the effect of a very, very slight bell, which I really liked. In fact, I liked it so much that on my next coconut sweater, which is the one I'm wearing, I went with an exaggerated bell. So um, rather than, it's so hard to see with the black, isn't it? Ask me how hard it was to see when I was knitting. it. <laughs> so, um, you can see that I have it split. I have a split cuff. Can you see that? That is hard to see. I have a split cuff here. So what I did is I actually, rather than decreasing, I increased as I went down. And then I I joined, I'd stopped the join in the round and I just um, left that open. So that's a kind of a very different sort of modern look that I really, really like. And for this one, this is my summer Emma. And this is worked in a bulky ribbon from Gedifra Yarns. I did a short sleeve and I did um, a wide boat neck. And I did short rows at the hem. And I did um, a little bit of a curved hem. So you can see a curved hem and a little tiny bit of a slit right there because I thought that was just nice for the summer. My point is that the Emma and so many of the designs in the Coco Knits book, they're just so flexible. It's like a blank palette, a blank slate where you can write your own design on it if you want to. If you wanted to work it in a, in a different stitch pattern, if you wanted to add a high-low hem, if you wanted to, um, to do whatever you wanted to it. You can absolutely do it using this recipe. I mean, once you get familiar with the coconuts method, then you're, you know, you're good to go. You know how to do it. And that's why the Emma is the first place because all of the patterns that Julie's designing now are knit with this 
um, with this concept. So as long as you know how to make the basic one, it's easy as pie to, you know, to do the others because you know the construction method. You don't have to learn a new way of doing things every time, which I think is great. Um, let's see. Did anybody have, so who has, anybody else had experience with the coconuts or do you have any questions in particular that you would like me to address? Um, I'm gonna go ahead and also bring up, I wanna show you the patterns that are in the coconuts workshop book because there are a lot of really cute patterns in there. So let me get that and I will do that. Hang on just a second. Whoops, so when you think you. about a regular I pattern, want you to stop. <laughs> Not this either. Let's see. Okay. All right. Here we are with this again. Get rid of that. And bring up. Not that. Oh my goodness. Okay. I'm going to have to figure this out, but um, I will eventually. Hang on. There we are. Okay. Okay, so these are the patterns that are in the book. This is actually the gray one that I knit. And I think she has some updated pictures on here. Yes, look at that. Isn't that just beautiful? So this is Emma version A, which is the long sleeved V-neck Emma. Here it is again in a different yarn and a three quarter sleeve. And you see how nice it looks both in this kind of sexy low cut way. And then in this more casual kind of um, half tuck with a t-shirt precious. And then here is where it's been done with a, a yarn that's much lighter than the, um, than the, the bulky weight. So, um, the, the pattern, the Emma is written at a gauge of three stitches to the inch. So this is a lighter weight yarn worked at um, over gauge. So it's a very loose fabric and it gives a, a completely different look. So this is the short sleeved, kind of cropped, very um, kind of oversized a little bit. And there's a close up on that beautiful English tailoring shoulder. Isn't that nice? Yeah, I really like that one. And there's the back. Okay. And then this is Emma version B, which is the boat neck, kind of the high neck. And here again, you can see that it's a sheer fabric because it's a finer yarn knit at three stitches to the inch. And here is the, the one that is the cover design. The, I mean, it's the same design, but you can see it's knitted at what I call two gauge. So this is a bulky yarn with a native gauge of three stitches to the inch um, in the Emma. And isn't that just so cute? I love it. Oh, and she's done it again in a cute little kind of um, uh, speckle. Very pretty. Again, close up of that beautiful English tailoring. Such an elegant look. And yeah, a little bit of a bell sleeve. I think that she didn't actually do a bell sleeve, but like with my gray one, she just didn't do any decreases. And so it looks to be a bell. Very, very pretty. And this is also in the book. This is a project called Lizzie. And I believe this has worked in a worsted weight. It's kind of a little crop topper there. And then here it is as a three or an elbow length sleeve. So you have the option, once you have the book, you have the option not only to do um, one in a bulky weight, but to do one in, um, you know, in a worsted weight. So very cute, very relaxed with no edging at all. I think this is such a fresh modern look. 
Very cute. Oh, and a longer one. So there's three lengths. Look at that. So this is the really long one. This is the kind of medium. And then there's the little cropped, sassy, sexy one. So cute. And then you can also do Emma as a cardigan. So this is fun and she has all kinds of um, great information about how to do the pockets. Um, very pretty. The pockets here, you can see that they're lined with this sassy little um, contrasting fabric. You can see the close up of that English tailoring. Very pretty. This is just your, you know, your basic throw on everyday kind of um, cardigan. Look how cute. I love that. This would be, see, she's wearing it with a dress. I think it's great with a dress. It's also great with, um, with jeans or whatever. So cute. All right. And this is Molly. Hang on a second. Let's see. So this, yeah, this is worked in a worsted weight yarn. Just a basic round neck pullover, worsted weight. So it's like a palette, you know, it's like a blank slate, a blank canvas. You can paint whatever you want to on there. You can make the neck high or low. Um, you can make the cuffs however you like. You can make the hem however you like. Here's the next version of Molly. And this has a bit of a high-low hem. Isn't that cute? And that's worked with short rows to give you that shape. What is here? Oh, and this is Tulula. I actually knit this and did a class on this. This is a very pretty, um, pretty little cardigan. And this is probably the easiest garment in the book. It doesn't give you um, exactly the same um, it gives you the same effect, but it doesn't require the same kind of increases and there isn't any sleeve. So it's definitely a, a pared down and more simple garment, a, a simple place to start. But I still would probably recommend the Emma because it does take you through each and every step in the Cocoa Knits process. Oh, she's re it. Isn't that cute? Yep. So this is fun. I wear my Tulula. My Tulula is white. Um, I think you saw it in an earlier picture. Um, I wear it all summer. I just love it. And that's what that um, that edging looks like. And it is this whole self-finished edging. I love the attention to detail that Julie gives her her designs. Everything is very clean and finished and modern looking. This is a lovely piece. What is this? And this is Tilda. So this is basically a V-neck. Um, and I don't believe this has the sleeve issue. This is sort of a um, um, a pullover version of the of the Tulula. So you see that it doesn't have a separate sleeve. So this is an easy one. And the, the increases used in this are yarn overs versus the lifted increase, which are definitely easier to do and less of a struggle. So if, if you're interested in Cocoa Knits and you have this book and you think you might like to try it on your own, um, Tilda or Tallulah would probably be a really, really good place to start um, because you already know how to do those things. Um, And I also wanted to show you um, some of the other patterns that were Julie Weisenberger's that were not in um, not in the book, but that you can make based on some of her, um, you know, based on this process. So let's see. All right, this one I think is cute. Just a, you know, kind of a little wrap sweater. I guess it's unisex, huh? Cool. Very fun. 
So it's a little bit different. I like this one, Zoe. This has a little bit of that puff cuff at the elbow and pockets. Nice. And um, it's, it, I guess this is garter stitch. Yeah, very cool. Yeah, that's very pretty. So there's always a little something different going on. This is just a wrap. Again, with that modern cuff. Cute, very cute, very different. It's different, but it's not like so different. I said very different, but it's not really all that different. It's just a little more modern, which is nice. It's not trendy. You know, I don't do trendy. That's cute. So isn't that interesting? This is with the, um, it has a, a detached lapel that you can leave open like that, or you can tie for a very different look. Isn't that fun? Huh, cool. You can see that I haven't really gone over these particular ones in great detail, but I do like looking at them with you. That's pretty. So many options. And I wanted to show you this one. Actually, um, this is probably one of the most famous ones, the Kiki, beautiful, very pretty. My daughter did Verena, and we had this in the shop. This is a beautiful jacket, you know, very structured kind of jacket in a heavy worsted weight with this pretty little kick pleat in the back. I love this. Very nice. All right. Okay, so that is what I wanted to share with you. We're out of time, but I did want to share with you about coconuts and the method and why you might be interested in trying this out. Even if you are a diehard bottom up and seamed girl, I think you might enjoy the benefits of coconuts from the fit um, and the ease of knitting. And it's always good to try a different method. So thanks so much for joining me and I will see you next time. If you're interested in the class that is available on the website and you can sign up and I will see you next week. Have a good evening.